Hi, let us now study pneumatics. Pneumatics is the first subject that we're going to consider in understanding mechatronics. But what is pneumatics? Pneumatics comes from the word pneuma. It is a Greek word pneuma. Pneuma means breath, air, or sometimes it is referred to a soul. Okay? So, pneumatics is defined as the overall application of pneumatic equipment. And in here, we'll be discussing first the direct control of single acting cylinder. Okay? So, all the symbols that we're going to use here is certified by the ISO, the International Standard Organization. Okay? So, in direct control of single acting cylinder, we have the single acting cylinder. This is the symbol for a single acting cylinder. What are the parts of a single acting cylinder? It has an input-output port and then it has a piston rod. Okay, this is the piston rod and this is the piston. And then we have here the cylinder barrel and then the spring. Okay, so this is a single acting cylinder spring return. Okay, it has only one input-output port. Okay, next we have here the two over two way bulb normally closed why two over two way bulb it has two squares the squares represents the number of positions okay since it has two squares then it ha it represents two positions okay this is the first square and it has an input port and then an exhaust port and an output port it is spring return okay this is normally closed because the input is close at the moment okay if the second square meaning the next position is actuated this square will switch over to this square then the air from the input will pass through the output okay it is push button actuated with a notch it has a lock okay so this is your three two over two way bulb spring return normally closed switch okay push button switch Okay, then we have here the FRL unit. What is this FRL unit? This is filter, regulator, and lubricant. Okay, why we need to have filter? Because there are contaminants in the air, like dust and other contaminants, right? So we have to filter the air. And then regulator for the pressure, for us to monitor the pressure, and the lubricator. We have here a lubricant or lubricator. Why? Because... These cylinders, these bulbs are made up of metals, okay? If we're going to inject air with no lubricants, this will stack up after some time. So, we need to put a lubricant, okay? A very small amount of lubricant is entering on this piece of metal, okay? To avoid the stack up of these devices, okay? So... This is your FRL unit. Stands for filter, regulator, and lubricator. And then we have here the compressor, the air supply. This is not the singer. Okay? This is the source of compressed air, the compressor. Okay? So, from the compressor, and then to the FRL unit, and then to the 2 over 2 way valve normally closed, spring return, push button actuated, and then the single acting cylinder. These are the schematic symbol we're going to use in direct control of single acting cylinder. Are you ready? Okay, now we connected the compressor to the FRL unit and then from the FRL unit to the 2 over 2 way bulb and then the output of the 2 over 2 way bulb to the input of the single acting cylinder. What will happen? Okay. The compressor has a motor. The compressor has an intake. So it compresses the air. It has a chamber where it is stored the compressed air. And it has also its own FRL unit. It has also a filter, regulator, and lubricator. But to ensure the pressure, the filtration, and the regulation of the air that is flowing to this, there is a second FRL unit or the service unit okay and then the output of this FRL unit is injected to the 
input of the two over two way valve normally closed. So since it is normally closed, it is closed. The air from the FRL is trapped in here. It is trapped in here. Okay. So there is no output. But if you actuate this, if you push this, then this square will switch over to this. What will happen? The air from the input will pass here and then to the in to the output. Okay? And then to the single acting cylinder. Okay? The compressed air in this chamber will cause this spring to compress. And this piston rod will move forward. Okay? If you actuate again this push button, if you push this once more, then with this spring, the cylinder or the valve will return to its original position. It will switch over to this square. Again, the air is cut off. What will happen to the cylinder? The, the accumulated air in this chamber will simply pass through this and then exhaust to this exhaust port. Okay, without this exhaust port, the cylinder will not move backward. But with this little triangle, this is an exhaust port, the, air com the compressed air here will simply exhaust in this exhaust port. Okay, causing the piston rod of the single acting cylinder to move backward with the aid of the spring. Okay, so if you push this, this will switch over, the air will pass to this, and then the cylinder will move forward. If you actuate this once more, it will go back to its original position and then the compressed air in here will simply exhaust here, causing the piston rod to move backward. Okay, so if you press this, this will move forward. If you press this again, this will move backward. That is the direct control of a single acting cylinder. Did you learn something? Please share and subscribe.